Actors. This is another HBA Spotlight. We've been doing this gosh, for the past month, and they've been really amazing. Today, I have a very special guest, friend, actress, philanthropist. I'm going to just keep adding things. I don't know why my hand got to be turned to the side. <laughs> yes, it's fine. We're in a pandemic. You yes. do whatever you need to do to get through. <laughs> I have Karen Kendrick with me. And listen, Karen, aside from being um, a beautiful person is we've been friends for quite some time you know her from most recently starring as Minnie McMillan in Just Mercy mm -hmm. please come on shout out the comments put Just Mercy in the comments if you saw Just Mercy if you supported it in the theaters so she can feel the love also Karen has been in Hidden Figures The Hate You Give Grey's Anatomy Greenleaf The Hunger Games I mean just to name a few She's the co-founder of the Kendrick Academy. And I love, I was reading your bio. It's so weird reading your friend's bio because I'm like, what's the bio <laughs> saying? But I love how you mentioned wanting to lift as you climb and not waiting until you made it, quote unquote, before you get back and help other people. And I think you and I very much have that in common because that's something we've been doing for quite some time. So welcome to Hollywood Bound Actors. This is our little, this is our crew here. Listen, if you're not watching this live, the replay will be available to all my replay watchers who will watch this later. What's up, you play watchers? Love you guys. Hey, Ren. Hey. Hey, Christine. How are you? Am I looking at you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. We practiced this. We're trying to get around. <laughs> Karen, thank you for being here. And listen, uh, I see you guys watching. Shout out to you, Pam. I see you, Sean, Tanya, Sabrina, Garland. Thank you for being on here today um, and offering to sh to share your experience and to offer some light uh, during this time that we're all experiencing right now. Um, can you just tell for people who are not familiar with you, I know they've seen you on in movies and TV shows, but tell us a little bit about your your start. I'm not even gonna say I know you're from Fort Valley, Georgia. <laughs> That's an inside joke. So apparently people from Fort Valley, Georgia don't say it that way. And whenever I try to say it how Karen says it, she shuts me down. Yeah, because it's absolutely <laughs> inappropriate and disrespectful all at the same time. <laughs> so I wasn't even gonna do that today. So <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what it was like growing up in Fort Valley, Georgia, and just seriously about your beginning. How did you get into the arts here in general? Um, first of all, shout out to Christine for being so consistent and so diligent in sharing the goods. Um, people don't always do this, and it's such a gift, and I appreciate you sharing it with your community and sharing me with your community. Oh, my Thank pleasure. You. Hey, everybody. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I grew up in Fort Valley, um, and it's, you know, pretty much the best place on the planet, but that's how we're talking about today. <laughs> so, um, I uh, called it, I grew, I grew up, when I was growing up, pardon me, we called it being on program, right? I remember meeting you guys, you and Saquon and Jahi, and it's like, you know, you went to Tri-City School for the Performing Arts. And it was this really big thing. You with YEA. Yeah. I was like, wow, that is so cool. So I went to Peach County High School and I was on program. And okay. what that meant was whenever there was a program at church or at school or in the community, if you wanted to perform, you had to get on program. Mm. Most people, most of my friends did not want to be on program. They did not want to have to say the scripture or read a poem or like they were bothered <laughs> by it. Right. <laughs> and I was like, when's the next one? What I can be, I do? I want to be on program. I'll do it. Right. And it was so funny because they were all much more um, polished, much more eloquent. I didn't realize how poorly I talked. Um, and I'm, you know, grateful that people could understand the words that, come out of my mouth most of the time, but um, I had a very lazy mouth. And so I always wanted to show up and say something and speak somewhere, but you know, it was, I had the heart, but my, my instrument hadn't really caught up with, with my mouth yet. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I started out just 
doing whatever I had access to doing. Okay. If it was reading a poem, if it was being in a skit, um, the local chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated had a summer <laughs> program. Come on, AKA had a summer program. And so we would do summer theater. That was the, the kids time to, to learn lines and perform for the community. And for me, that was just like the biggest thing. Um, you know, and sometimes I would try to get my mom to call people to, <laughs> I forced my mom to be an agent early on. I would try to get her to call people. <laughs> I said a momager. Like, come on. Mama yeah. yeah. I would get her to call people to like, you know, to like put me on, you know, and it would be like, okay, next time, <laughs> next time. Um, but in, in my mind, you know, that just made sense. And I would get all my friends to participate. You know, I started, I don't know how many girls groups and we would be practicing in the basement and, you know, choreographing. And they'd be like, what? We just want to get out the house. Like some people enjoyed it, but they, I see now, I totally couldn't see it then, but I see now that they were really not that into it. I was like, you know, do it again. Let's go. Let's go. And they were just like, okay, Karen, like, it's a talent show. Chill, you know? And the same thing when I went to college, um, I remember like this, they posted this audition notice. And I remember running back to my dorm and being like, y'all, it's auditions now for, you know, whatever it was. And they were like, I'm a science major, <laughs> number one. Thank you. <laughs> number two. Yeah. Good luck with that. I have laughs. And I, I, it, it never dawned on me, honestly, that this wasn't something that everybody wanted to do. I just I thought, like, huh? I can relate to that. I dragged a, my childhood friend growing up in New York. I did an interview last week and I was like, yeah, I used to make re reenact like late night talk shows and play with the cast. Right. And I made her be a guest and she would be like, okay. <laughs> And AJ, who interviewed me last week, was like, well, perhaps that's why you're not friends anymore. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I've been so in that, like you said, you're, we're so in it. Like, yeah. it just, what else? Why wouldn't you want to? Exactly. I'm putting you on. <laughs> right? No, Christine. <laughs> It was just us. We had other <laughs> desires, other goals in life. Who you, knew? Got, you got some Fort Valley love. Sylvia Camille Pierce says, my grandmother graduated from Fort Valley, my uncle, cousins, and husband. So, Come uh, on, the FBSU. Yay. Uh, the FBSC and FBSU. So history later. Continue. A whole, lot of, a whole lot of letters. Somebody said, hashtag Wildcats. Come on, Wildcats. Okay. Fort Valley. No, too early. Okay, it's too early. listen. It's too do soon. not get excited. Do not get carried away, Christine. We know this does not always end well for you. You're like, just because okay. we live, don't get, don't get brand don't do Oh, don't do gosh. Oh, y'all know I love to laugh. Um, And and we yeah. need laughter. We do need joy laughter. Is always joy is also resistance. Uh, so we have to also allow ourselves to be in that lane. I love that. You know, when, when we texted this morning, I was like, what should we call our conversation? Last week, I um, we had the hilarious Edward um, Maware. Before that, we had Lisa, Lenisa Renee Frederick from half of Hashtag Booked. We'll have Danielle, the other half of it coming soon. Susan Hayward, we have coming this month as well. Carl Gilliard this month. Um, you Good know, thing I'm your friend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I deserve to be in this lineup. I'm glad I know you, Christine. Okay. Well, we were texting. I was like, "What should we? What should we?" Because I just like I just wanted to have a conversation with you and and let people get to know you. I was like, "What should we call our chat?" And you said, "Peace in the midst of the storm." Why did you? I I I resonate with it. And why why did that come up for you? Why why that this morning? Um, probably because yesterday I had a whole meltdown. <laughs> Yesterday, I, there was no peace. Um, of course, we are aware of the layers of, of life and death and struggle and striving and misunderstanding and understanding and questions and confusions and, and, and life. Life things that we typically are able to tidy up, mm -hmm. to push aside, to marginalize, to categorize and put it in a place where it doesn't really disrupt. We are living in a state of disruption. We are living 
in a storm. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing pretty well considering, mm -hmm. considering what's happening, considering how it is affecting us globally, nationally, locally, and, and personally. Yeah. But yesterday it hit me. Yesterday, you know, and, and when you maybe people can can relate to this or you're talking to friends and family, everybody has their moment. Ooh, I was about a moment. <laughs> yeah, where you're just like, okay, so are there any more seats on the spaceship? Let's explore that. Because I can't do whatever's happening here. Not today. I can't do that. I'm I'm done with that part, you know? And it, it was for me, a moment of not being able, being able to clearly recognize the storm, but not being able to find the peace. And so I had to take a step back and say, okay, all right, this is not how we're going to do this, right? This is not sustainable. What can I do? And so because I just had that experience most recently, and it was of benefit to me, I thought that's what I can honestly and earnestly share in this moment with you and with your group. The first thing I had to do was take a step back. I have, you know, I typically will, will read headlines, but I don't take deep dives into yeah. every single aspect of the news. I like to keep abreast of what's going on, to understand the conversations that are happening. There may be one or two things that I that I dive into. Mm -hmm. But recently, I've been reading the articles, reading the captions, reading, watching the videos. Yeah. And there is a level of trauma, whether we acknowledge it and embrace it or not. Um, there's a level of trauma that we experience every time we consume the desecration of a black, a brown body, mm -hmm. the words that are hurled to demean and to hurt, even if you don't, you think you're not taking it in, even oh, if yes. you are, you're consuming that Facebook post where people are earnestly trying to figure things out and work things out. But sometimes we're, they're received and sometimes they're given as a tax. We're taking all of this in, but not necessarily acknowledging the trauma of it and not necessarily processing it. I have this thing that I say, we, we're so focused on the drama of it all. Nobody talks about the trauma of it all. Mm -hmm. And so it just sits and it begins to, to fester and then manifest. And what does it become? Right. And how does it, get, how does it get released? How does it get released? When I was um, growing up, girl, now this was a big deal. We had, this tells my age, we got a Commodore 64, girl. You probably <laughs> weren't born yet, right? Oh these computers, <laughs> these computers, <laughs> ain't gonna tell nobody, ain't gonna tell nobody. Um, so that was like a big deal to have this computer, mm -hmm. right? And I was a little girl, but the one thing I remember, and I think this is from the Commodore time, garbage in, garbage out. Right. Whatever goes in has to come out. It's how we're made. And we 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 understand it physically, but we don't acknowledge it psychologically, emotionally, mentally. So on a very practical level, I had to honor that I was putting all this stuff in, but I was not getting it out. Yeah. So to acknowledge some very practical ways of getting it out for me, when I woke up yesterday morning, I wanted to run. Mm -hmm. Now, Christine, <laughs> you know me. And I, I believe in, in exercise and it's healthy and I will go for a nice brisk walk. I might even do some sprints. But yesterday, sis, in my, my heart's desire was to run. As fast as possible. As fast and as far as I could, just to run indefinitely. You know what else I've been wanting to do very consistently? Box. Hmm. One of my one of my friends' clients, shout out to Farrah Lopez. She has a thing in her house, and she takes a class online, and she says it's so stress relieving. Yeah, and I've I've taken. There's a boxing gym that I joined on Groupon. Shout out to Groupon. Um, 
And I had this series of classes and I was like, well, I'm going to come because I paid for it. But I don't, re- this was years ago. I was like, I don't really, there's nothing in me that wants to repeatedly hit something. Mm-hmm. Right? It's in me now. Yeah. <laughs> it's here. <laughs> this, yeah. I've been searching for boxing equipment. And in the meantime, between running and girl, I would get up here in Tybo. I done pulled up Billy Blanks on YouTube, sis. I gotta get it out. Billy will never see you wrong. Billy, Billy Blanks, will, he will never see you wrong. You know, it's I love that you're saying this. And it's funny, as I listen to you, I forget, I don't know who I was talking to at this point. But I told someone, oh, shout out to Jasmine, who I was talking to earlier. I was like, we're one, I'm like one video away. I'm always like a video away, a, a phone call. Like tears just are welling up as I'm just listening to it. Like, mm-hmm. like it just, it will take at this point, it's really not much. Yeah. Um, and so the release is so cr- uh, crucial. Um, what's up, Dawn? Hi, Orlando, Pam, Sarah. I see you guys. Thank you for popping in. Um, Pam says, yes, we are in a storm. Maybe it's about going with the storm instead of resisting it. Yes, a level of trauma. My heart is with you. Um, And so, and that's why I've really been talking. We all are sharing how we want to share. And again, if you're just joining, I'm here with the Karen Kendrick, amazing actress, but she's, you know, just like all of us, we're processing. And so I appreciate her being here. Um, But I've been really vocal about mental health awareness and not like in a just a hashtag way no like see if your insurance has it (laughs) see if there's a a free if you don't have insurance see if there's something you can get for free or reduced discounts like it is crucial um for us and i also think as artists as actors who we sit in other people's bodies and stories and truths like that's our job Mm -hmm. like so we are very open so how ha- how have you been able to, I know we've talked offline, but how have you been cultivating the actress, artists within you? You know what? Something that I um, adopted and that I had to get back to, which was the other part of dealing with this, finding this peace in the midst of storm, because I agree, you know, it's not about getting out of the storm. For me, it's about it's about finding peace in the middle of it. And that peace leads to purpose. There's a scripture that I rely on and I have to remember because it's so easy as an artist, as a working artist, to focus here. You're, you're in the trenches. You're getting it done. You got to do this, this, and this. I have this huge post-it on my wall and it's filled with all of the things that I have to get done and to hold myself accountable. And da, 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 right? But one thing that I choose is to follow the scripture that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And the things, um, admittedly at first was like, ooh, good, a job, Jesus? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Some more zeros in that bank account, Lord? Okay, let me seek you. You know what I mean? Like the things. Yeah. But the things that he is adding to me that I can experience now is that peace in the midst of the storm. There is a knowing, knowing that none of this is a surprise to God. None yeah. of it. He is not reacting. I am. Right. He is not. And so for me, that's the thing that that put me in a place of, of peace, of understanding, and then moved me into purpose. And it's like, okay, so... Who am I in this moment? And something that I shared earlier on my Instagram page was, you know, we are all in this moment together. We're all trying to figure out what this is. And there are so many different elements, right? There is an emotional element that some people say, well, don't get caught up in emotion because X, Y, and Z. And there is an element of, well, I'm going to, I'm going to give or I'm going to protest, or I'm going to preach, or I'm going to, you know, whatever that is. And I don't think we have to choose. I don't think it's an either or. I think it's a yes and. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm I'm reminding myself and encouraging people to do is to be still. Hear what you can hear. Listen and really hear what you can hear with yourself. See what you can see within yourself. Be still and just be. 
Mm-hmm. Don't don't force that energy into action just to get it out. Go for a jog, right? Box the air to get it out. Because what we're entering into, I believe, is a space of life work. Not mm-hmm. something where we can check off boxes and say, okay, now we do Got this, this, and this. Right. right? And now it's over. It's not. We're entering into a space where we have to learn how to engage in a different way and to continue this forward. And I think that if we rush to to try to fix or we rush to to choose one thing over the other. And I, and I hope my heart is coming through because I'm not sure that my words are. But if, if we rush to, like, you know, check the boxes, then it lets us off the hook. And my concern is that we'll end up where we were. Right. To yeah, the, but, which, exactly. which, which leads me to, you know, you've been on my mind too. And, and it's a trip we had, we didn't talk in the past couple of days because you and I, Cameron and I, we check in. And honestly, sometimes she does a better job at checking in with me. And, oh. and, um, are you good girl? Are you good? Uh, not so good. Right. But I've been thinking about you too. You know, you did such an amazing, amazing job portraying Minnie McMillan in Just Mercy. If you have not seen Just Mercy, check it out. You can find it. Um, and it's it's currently streaming for free online for the month of June in an effort to, to, to begin to foster conversations about systemic racism and what that looks like. Where? Do you know? Is it... Um, I know Amazon or, or whatever streaming platforms, I think. Okay. But, um, yeah. So you can find it. Um, but there's a Just Mercy film page on Instagram for more information. You can go to uh, the Just Mercy Facebook page and I'll be posting about it tonight on my Instagram as well. Oh, fabulous. So that is amazing. So if you haven't seen it now, you have no excuse. Please check it out. But I've been thinking about you and thinking about this character and it's so interesting. Every black woman under the sun auditioned for this role, right? <laughs> and and when I got to see you in it, it was just like, yep. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. And but I'm thinking about the weight this woman carried, the strength of her. I love, I watched you in so many interviews in red carpets talking about her. Um can you talk a little bit about the process of getting into her and then also how you getting into her help is affecting you now. Like, Mm. you know what I mean? Am I making sense? Like the journey into her and how deep you had to go. Mm. And you, we don't easily shake that, that work, that, that, that research, that connection to the character Jamie Foxx played, um, to the truth, the reality of the system as it is. And then being in this moment in time right now, yet again, after portraying someone, you know, who went through this before, just, I'm just curious about your process and then how, it, if it, if at all is lingering with you. Um, so I often say that, you know, usually, and you know, you get a breakdown and it has all the different attributes that, that the writer has written or the director sees or, you know, whatever of, of this person. Right. And so for me, I look at this list of things and I begin to kind of weave together these, these attributes into, um, a fabric. I kind of layer on. I like to add on layers, right? That's that's usually, excuse me, how I think about the work. And with Minnie McMillan for the first time, I felt like I was revealing. I felt like it was about taking layers off. Um, there is a part of her life and her experience that I just, it just, I felt it in my bones. Mm -hmm. Um, when I saw the picture of her, I saw my grandmother. Um, there, I am from the rural South and there was just an understanding when I saw her. And so it was about not covering any parts of, of me that I felt could help amplify the parts of her that would help to tell the story. Um, 
the year after we wrapped, I actually just took a year off. Um, I went back to Fort Valley and did some, some heart work and some human work to begin to really wrap my mind around things that came up in the filming process. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot to kind of explore and discover and understand. And I gave myself permission to do that. I felt like this was a piece that, um, I felt like something was coming. I didn't know what, but I felt like something was coming and I felt like I also needed to take the time to reconnect with my family because I didn't know. I felt like whatever was coming, I wouldn't have that time. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what has helped make this a little more palatable. It's still very difficult because I, you know, we're very close knit family and I'm not there with them. Um, but I am so grateful that I listened and that I took a step back and took that year off and played Barbie dolls with my little niece and went to SNS cafeteria with my mama, you know, um, you know, I hung out with my dad, you know, I'm just, I'm grateful for that. In terms of the character lingering in this moment, I continue to just honor her presence, her humanity, um, her voice, Brian Stevenson was was um, interviewed by Parade Magazine, and he shared this. He talked about it's in the it's in the in a clip. They talked about how he, you know, Miss McMillan, the real Minnie McMillan, saw the film, and made the comment, you know, oh, she's stronger than I am, and he said, no, she took all your strength and showed it to the world. Yes, and you know that there's so much we could we could talk about in terms of, you know, a black woman's voice and what that means and how people don't necessarily see it and how as a as an actress, you have to know that even if somebody doesn't see it, you still got to find ways to amplify it. Yeah. Because the things that I would respond to uh someone who doesn't have my experience might not, but you got to keep working in that vein because someone who does have your experience will Mm -hmm. Right. And so then when when the, the feedback that I've gotten from black women who see it. They can they they see themselves. I, again, I'm much better with the script <laughs> no, because there's a piece and I've seen I've seen you talk about this in so many interviews. That I know some people may be new to you, but. I think you the the layers. I that's one of my favorite things about about crafting character and, and creating character. Um, and, and the challenge when you have is when you have a real human being. It's not a fictional character. Oh, this is a real person. You gotta honor her and you better do it right. Like there's pressure there. So and there's so many things as as human beings that we don't want you to see. Like we we I might be very vulnerable, but I'm gonna cover it with this brashness but you can make me cry super easy. Like, so I love hearing about how we have the layers and how you decided to reveal instead of cover, because that's a, that's a, that's a, that's an alternate way guys. I mean, you building characters, your own process. Yeah. So, and that's why some of my, some of my students are like, I'm going to do all this character bio work. Yes. You better get used to doing it in the two liners. So, because it, I'm always trying to teach that it doesn't, the process should not change because it's two lines versus 10 pages. Mm. Like mm. honor the character, give the character life, a history, a story. Um, and yes, you go deeper with some, but I just, I think that's a very interesting just part of it. And for it her to, scary. oh yes. <laughs> it was scary. It was. I was like, okay. Because, you know, Christine, you've been working for years, right? So you know how to do this. You know? You know how to... Christine, somebody could give you a script right now and you could go perform it right now. Because you have that muscle. That muscle within you is strong. So sometimes at this point in the journey... You have to remind yourself not to just rely on that muscle that's strong. Woo! Use it. 
Come on, a word. Yes. But then continue to explore and build other muscles, right? So yeah, that's what that one was for me. And it was it was scary. It was probably the most vulnerable that I have felt or been in the work. And that that means that's how you got stretched. You got stretched. Yeah. I love how you talk about that. And guys, if, if you are just hopping on, Karen Kendrick from Just Mercy and a plethora of other films. I'm here to take your questions. We have about 15 minutes before we wrap. Any questions for her? Have you seen Just Mercy? What did you think? Um, you can see it uh, this month. They're offering it as a free stream. Do not miss that opportunity to watch amazing character work from the entire cast. Um, I love how you talked about the muscle. Um, Again, I'm going to go because I, I know you. Can you talk a bit about taking any job versus being mm. particular in what you put out? Because you had a chance to be a part of some really, um, really impactful projects. I mean, the hate you give, hidden figure, figures, I mean, just mercy. Like these, are, these have really affected our community. Um, at, at large, but it's not always about, and you know, I see this as a, like a television actor, you know, they used to put us in a box, TV actor, film actor, right? But of course now the lines get blurred. So how do you decide, how do you know, okay, I will do this? Because it, it may mean you don't work every, every month. It might be a gig a year. What's your deciding factor in that? Or is there one? <laughs> I love this question, honey, because Jesus, listen, <laughs> I think God knows my heart. Let me share a little something. Now, this is going to be some real, like, don't tell my mama, right? Okay. So I do not, nor have I ever had a six pack. <laughs> And I believe it is because God knows my heart. Who knows where you might find me if I had a six pack. I just want to, I'm going to leave it right there. So in terms of the work, girl, there's stuff I don't even hear about. It's stuff I don't even know. And I think that's a part of that surrender. Yeah. And that's a part of that, like, okay, Lord, you know, I really do want to be used for his purpose. It's really not about me, you know? Um, and and every I'm not saying that that's everybody's journey in terms of, well, you know, you gotta you gotta sit with and, and I let me say this. Excuse me, I can share, I can't tell people what to do, I can tell you what I've done, mm -hmm. right? And I can share my experience with you because sometimes I'm like, I'm probably coming off like, and Jesus said, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I love the Lord, but I'm sharing my experience. I just want to say, say that. But for me, it's really about like taking the time to really be in relationship with God and be like, okay, God, what do you have for me to do? Right? Because the times where I'm like, Lord, I want this, you know, and I'm, and I'm going to get it and I'm going to do it. I was just so out of alignment and I was just like not blessing nobody. I might've got a check, but it was a horrible experience. Right. I wasn't pouring into nobody. I wasn't being poured into. It was just, you know what I'm saying? It was a lesson that in the moments that I yield to him and I yield my career to him. And when he places me, when God does a thing, that was the, that was the mantra for my just mercy journey when God does a thing. When he does it, he does it well. And so when I look at the, the times where I've just said, I surrender, mm -hmm. Lord, I just give it to you. Hunger games. The hate you get, you know, the, the things that you reference. Yeah. When I just say, Lord, I'm gonna take my hands off of it. Father, just guide me where you would have me to be. It's just a blessing that I really could not have even asked for. It'd be a trip to be on the phone. You'd be like, hey, girl. I'd be like, hey. You'd be like, so listen, um, I got to fly to Antarctica to shoot this food. <laughs> what? Huh? Oh, my goodness. I leave Saturday. I can't tell you. I can tell you right now. I'd be like, okay. Okay. I'll be at the theater when it comes. <laughs> you are so crazy. <laughs> 
You are so nuts. Listen, because you don't know. It's like, okay. All right, Lord. And it happens. It happens suddenly. It, you know, that's why I'm telling you, because so, it happens suddenly. Yeah. And so the work then, and I got to I, I have my computer charged up, but not my phone. You know, the technical situation we had. So I'm going to grab my charger. But but the work then becomes for me not focusing in the trenches, but keeping my eyes on him. And when I do that, he takes care of the trenches. He takes care of all that stuff. Right. He'll tell me. Okay, like I did Greenleaf. I did a couple of seasons of Greenleaf. But prior to booking Greenleaf, God had placed on placed music back on my heart. I grew up playing the piano and he had placed it on my heart to get back into it, to get back, you know, do your scales and, and just work it back up because it's a muscle as well. But I was so focused on trying to get this and trying to book that and trying to da 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 that I didn't. So when Greenleaf came, I booked it. But when they said, now, do you also play? I was like, this is why you got to listen to the Lord and be obedient. You know what I mean? And so I missed out on that whole, I was there, but I missed out on that level. Yeah, because I wasn't so... Those lessons have reminded me and taught me, girl, just God is God. He sees more than we could ever see. Somebody and said, when I just trust him, he just guides me where I need to be. They got your hashtag going. When God hashtag, when God does a thing. Yes. When God does a thing, honey. Shantae, Let me grab my charger. Okay. I'm listening. I'm listening. No but, Shantae, I see you said that's good. Stay in alignment with God. There was a question I saw. If you have any questions, we're going to wrap in a few minutes, but um, Karen has been sharing her story, her journey, um, and she's open to any questions you have. Hey, um, hey, hey. Well, so, <laughs> um, you may have touched on this a little bit, but Sylvia asks, what is your biggest challenge preparing for an audition? Do you have any challenges? <laughs> Girl, you know what? Okay. Oh, God. There we go. All right. Um, you know, I often say like <laughs> acting is the easy part, right? Mm -hmm. It's all the other stuff. It's the life that you got to manage to get to the acting. Acting is acting is a fun part. Um, so and at a certain point, I think, like I said, you have that muscle so you can kind of get into it. Christine can talk about this. First of all, Booking magnet is like the perfect term because Christine, you talk about me calling. It's like, hey Christine, hey girl, I'm working with. Hey girl, I'm on set. Oh, I was eating ice cream, but but hey girl, hey, um, you know. And so it's like when you get into, you know, I'm sure the training that she's sharing with you, when you when you get into into this mode and you understand how to do it, it's like you know you 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 work your process right mm -hmm. and so for me particularly in los angeles particularly moving here the hardest part has been being intentional about building and cultivating community mm -hmm. um you know a lot of people i see go home not because acting was hard but because like it can be just such a, you feel sequestered. Isolated in a book. Isolated. Like, and, that, and that's where the pressure comes. If I don't yeah. get, like, at least if I'm going to be alone with no friends or community, at least let me just be working nonstop. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. always work out that way. No, no, it doesn't. And, you know, I've done, like, I, I, I've done a project since Just Mercy, but there's been a lot of time, you know, I have had the gift of downtime and knowing who you are, even in those moments, I think is, is also the work. And it's imperative that you invest in that. Um, if you, if you're asking specifically about technical things, um, excuse me, I would say just making sure that you honor whatever your process is. That's something that I have to give myself permission to do. Mm -hmm. If it's that I have to put my phone on do not disturb, then that's what I have to do. And it doesn't matter that my non-actor friends um, work nine to five and then they can now talk 
<laughs> when I need to be studying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. That doesn't really, you know, you got to honor your process. You wouldn't call them in the middle of their work day. Or if you did, they probably wouldn't pick up. And so it's okay to not pick up in the middle of your work day, even if somebody else doesn't understand it. Um, one of the fun things, I can share this, because I'm like, what are the hard parts? One of the fun things is, you know how like going down a rabbit hole is usually a bad thing? When you, for me, when I'm acting and researching stuff, going down the rabbit hole is like one of the fun, right? It's so much fun because it's like you can follow your curiosity and you learn so much in the process. I feel like I know just random stuff about stuff that like (laughs) I may never use in life. But you get two or three scripts, you got to do that. You got to underline words and look them up and you got to research people and you got to make connections and and connect the dots. And, you know, and and you're going to be on YouTube and Google. I always tell my students, it's like, putting your detective hat on. Yeah. It's really yeah. what it is. And, and I love that you're saying fun because I'm always trying to say that there are so many uh, parts that are, uh, well, there's other, like you said, there's, other, there's marketing and then there's getting dressed up for photos and, and oh. there's last minute, you know, red carpets and things yeah. like that. There's all the stuff that can put you in a frenzy at times, but this part, like, I I think you, that's just so beautiful. Touching on finding the part that is the most fun to you Mm -hmm. because if no part of it is fun, this is, it may may not be the right career for you and it's going to make it very challenging. Yeah. You know? So I love that you said that. Sorry. Shade. Hey, that was an amen from the ring light. That was an amen. Ring light said, amen. Amen. All right. And this is why you should, look, this is a um, a lesson. Always have your stuff up to date. My thing, I was doing something last night and it absolutely broke. I'll send you the video, Christine. <laughs> it was a little traumatic. And... um. I can't see. I can't see what you're saying. Hopefully, you're not saying anything crazy. I, no, you're still good. I would tell you. No, you're still okay. good. Um, you're actually framed a little better, a little wider. Um, oh, hmm. have I been on? Is that a new couch? No, girl, this ain't no new couch. <laughs> I'm like the same couch. Like the couch was different. Girl, you know why? Because this couch has been going through. I have been living on this couch during the quarantine. Oh, it looks, that's it looks cozier. It looks more lived in. Like that's what so it much. is. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna have to give me a new couch when this is over because you sure. know, just get you a throw, a little a, a throw, dress it all up. Sasha says, Do you reject a role because of your beliefs? Um, I have never had that experience. I don't well, there was an audition that I did reject. Um, And I won't say what it was. It went on to be very, very popular. Um, And I still don't regret doing it because it just didn't sit well with me. I got several. Um, Yeah, it's like, mm, but um, mm -mm. I'm telling y'all some things I think don't come to me because God knows what he can trust me with and what he cannot. (laughs) And you know it too. And I love this question, Sasha, because it's not even just, this is not even about like, religion it is about what like you may be like i remember getting some scripts like it was just so disrespectful to women i couldn't even i was like Mm -hmm. what and Mm -hmm. finally enough actors rejected the audition and the agent was like read it and was like oh oh, okay i understand Mm -hmm. so you have to as long as and this is in any stage of your career you have to you have to just be clear and if it when you read that script and it just there's a difference between, oh, this is going to stretch me, and do I have to do this? I, don't be afraid to be dropped by your agent just because you turned down an audition. Like, you have the right to do that if you don't want to do it. Just yeah. there. Um, and I think, I think, too, I'm probably, like, responding to the idea of religion because I think that, like, now tr- I was born and raised, you know, Baptist church, CME church, like, scripture quoting, Bible toting, all of that, right? That at a certain point, I had to move from religion to relationship. Mm -hmm. I still go to church. I still study the word. 
But for me, it went from being a checklist of things that I can and cannot do to really, um, and I joke about God knows my heart, honey. If I had this six pack, I joke about that. And it's still kind of true. He's working on me. I am not perfect. Um, but once you deposit the word in you, certain things are going to quicken your spirit, right? There are certain things you're going to respond to and certain things you are not, or you're going to respond to differently. And so I think in terms of my relationship, you know, there are things I, I, I have to pray about. You know, I have to ask questions still. I don't think there's a checklist of, you know, of yes and no. I think that's relationship, engaging in conversation through prayer, through study or whatever, and making decisions from there versus, well, if you do this, 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 and this, then does that make sense? It does. And and, and still at the end of the day, it, it comes down to you got to just check in with yourself. Mm-hmm. Check in with yourself for what you are or not willing to do. Yeah. And be brave enough to stand on that. You know, you talked about like, I don't want to get dropped by my age. I don't want, baby. <laughs> Sugar. <laughs> that ain't the conversation. Right? <laughs> that ain't it. Oh. oh my gosh. Who is the Shanti says, Shante. I probably messed it up, girl. I'm sorry. That's uh, all right. She be doing it to me too, boo. Don't even worry about it. She says, what is... And Saquon just popped on. She says, hey, lady. Hey, Saquon. Um, Shantae says, what is the most important thing that you think catapulted you into your breakthrough? Ooh. Have I... <laughs> You know, there's a, there's a there's a great quote that a, a business coach of mine used to say. She would say, "To every third grader, a fourth grader is a god." Right? So oh, there's always that's something wonderful. <laughs> so and it's so true, right? When we're little, we're like, "Yeah, you're right." Okay. Um, I think that here's a question I ask myself. Right? What if the journey is the destination? Mmm, that's good. Like, what if that's the whole point? I like that. And so I try not to fixate on levels. Because if a if a fourth grader is a God to a third grader, what is a fourth grader to an eighth grader? Right. <laughs> right? Perspective. Right. right? <laughs> It's so, all right. And you roll around feeling like God, you know, a God. And then you roll up on the eighth grade. You're like, oh, about that. <laughs> right? So. I'm going to go back to my fourth grade friends. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to hang out with a third grader so I can feel like I need to feel. But um, so instead, I try to focus on the journey and how can I honor the journey? How can I honor where I am right now? Yeah. Um, and something I want to make sure I talk about before I leave is the whole idea of what is your something. Oh yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, what is your something is so when I when I kind of delved into this um this world of just mercy and the more I learned, I was honestly overwhelmed by how much work Brian Stevenson had done and was doing, but also how much more needed to be done. And I was like, okay. And we were getting ready to go to, this felt maybe like a breakthrough moment. We were getting ready to premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival. And it hit me like, I'm on stage with these giants. Like these people are giants, right? And I prayed that I was like, God, what am I gonna say to these people? Like, what am I gonna, I'm sitting next to them. And, and they're all graduates, right? If we're using, if we're going to use that same analogy, they're graduates and I'm trying to get into pre-K. That's how I felt. Right. Um, and I was like, what am I going to say? And that's how, what is your something was born. And what I realized is that in that year off, in that process, you know, I learned that no one can do everything. Although Brian Stevenson is very close. But everyone can do something. So the question I had to ask and answer for myself is, what is your something? What can you do right from where you stand with what you have, with what you know, and with who you have access to? 
because that's your circle of influence. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to learn more, it becomes your circle of responsibility. Right. So in terms of what catapults you, what moves you forward, I think it's honoring your something. I think it's honoring the journey. There's something that you that I learned in summer uh, in the summer um, AKA productions that prepared me for the high school productions. Mm -hmm. It's something that I learned there that prepared me for the 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 college productions. When I met Christine and Saquon and Jahi, y'all, I had never seen fire like this in my life. And I was just like in awe and just so excited and just inspired and wanted to just like understand like where y'all come from, how y'all do this. Oh my God, it was amazing. And so it was something about being in that space with those gifted artists at that time that prepared me, that informed me for the next moment, mm -hmm. right? That if they taught me so much, and all of them are younger than I am, but they taught me so much about how to be as an artist that I use in, in my professional work. There, you know, so at every moment, I just, I feel like it's about learning, growing, um, honoring the people yeah. in that moment and, and honoring the journey. So... I love that. And that way you don't have to look back because we can be in such, in such desire of the big vision that we yeah. don't appreciate things along the way. Yeah. It's why I'm always talking about, we, you know, whenever I'm working with clients, we start a session and they want to jump in. I said, wait, let's start with celebrations. Yep. Three celebrations, three things that you're grateful for. And it'd be like, uh, uh, like, come on. You know, yeah. my coach says we can't, you can't build upon success you don't acknowledge. And so yeah. that's part. And that when you sit back, like, well, you know what? I actually did this. That, because we, it's, because what happens? We reach a goal, we set the new goal. And then, so when do we ever get to sit? Now I'm not saying, you know, I do, I was, you know, came from the Freddie Hendricks school of, of acting. So, you know, you're only as good as your last performance. So I live, I understand that, but there's also a point of honoring. I did this work. I reached this goal. Yep. I'm proud of myself. Yep. And wow, that's a win. And I'm, and that yep. moves you to the next thing. But if you don't ever sit in it, and they're just, it will never be enough. Right. You see it. I mean, the, the work we're doing now, the work we're doing now, <clears throat> starring in feature films, television shows, this is the stuff I dreamed of when I was, you know, 19. I was like, oh, when I get a guest star, it's over. <laughs> right. <laughs> get this job. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Listen, listen. You could not tell me that when they let me do the announcements on Sunday morning at WC, was it WXKO AM 1150 in Fort Valley? When I was on the radio, boo. If you had asked me then, that was my breakthrough, sis. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, you do it. And, Christine, you taught me that. You I remember one day, um, I think you were coming from an audition. And this was years ago. I don't even know if you remember this. And you were like, um, yep, I just left the store. I got something very special for myself. I'm headed home to enjoy it. And because I just had a great audition, I put in the work. I'm going to celebrate that tonight, and then I'm going to get back. And I was like, yeah. wow, yeah, that's yeah. powerful. Yeah, I had to, I had to do that because I had to honor myself in the work that I did. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I booked the room. <laughs> now, whether they pick me or not, that's on right. that. But, but if it's not this, if, it, if they don't pick you for this one, the next one. Right. And the next one. Because so many people don't even get in the room. Yes, girl. That's something that I, I was like, wow. You know, we take some... some I am guilty of taking things for granted, right? And so it's like, because you do have this kind of like eye of the tiger, get it done, da 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 da, da right? But that's not honoring the journey. And the reality of the journey is there are people who do not get into the room. Yep. There are people who get into the room and they don't get called back into the room. 
You know what I mean? There are people who yeah. don't book the room. Yeah. So if they're calling you and they're calling you back and they're asking you to come in, yeah. That's a win. That's, that's a win. And that's a part of the journey. Yeah. 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 Ah, I love it. We're getting ready to wrap. I'm going to tell you how to stay in contact with Karen. Um, I have, I'm going to take one last question I see here that looks David Perry. What's up, David? He says, a lot of us have much to celebrate, more than we are willing to give credit. Uh, Tracy says, gratitude. Yes. Um, uh, Saikon is asking, do you still have the acting students group? Is that, I'm assuming that's for Karen? In the, the academy, maybe? the Kendrick Academy. So we we had to pivot. When I moved to LA, we moved to live events, and so instead of the daily after school program that we were doing, we started to do, um, I guess, periodic events like live plays, um, live performances. One of the most recent things we did, which I was very it was a win. That was a it was a it was a huge moment for me. It was kind of like a big full circle moment. Was um well first the girls empowerment tour tour. So we did that, which was not just in Fort Valley, but it was something that we did like across the country. So did that from come after like, Hidden Figures or was that before Hidden that Figures? That was Hidden Figures. That was for Hidden Figures. Okay. So okay. we did every we did up in the, like you know, DC, uh New York, um Stanford, I spoke at NASA. And we had groups of girls all over the NASA, you know, NASA. that one. So I was like, like rock, that's my rocket impression, rocket show. <laughs> this is one of those, see, this is one of those moments where it's like, yeah, girl, I got to go speak in NASA next week. It's like, what? <laughs> see? Y'all thought I was lying. That's her. And I, ain't, I didn't plan it though. It was one of those, you know, one of those guy moments. But, um, but for Just Mercy... Um, Warner Brothers granted us the rights to do an early premiere for my hometown. And so we were able to to bring Just Mercy home like a week before it was released to the to the public. And that was a super big deal. Yeah. So now we are um, working. It's not finalized, so I'm a little hesitant to say, but we're working to um build an ecosystem of of artists in the southeast so that people can begin to understand what this whole thing looks like a lot of times i get questions about acting but there are so many more roles to play mm -hmm. and so furthering the understanding and the education of um performing yes but also writing and producing um, what that looks like. And so I'm really, really excited about that. Yes, we need more writers, more producers, yes. more, more people behind and in front of the camera. Yes. And can we right. say something, Christine, before we leave? No, good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure I say Ooh, this part. Say it. Um, don't be afraid of failure. Failure is also a part of the journey, whatever that may look like for you. Like, there are moments... Um, where I have really just felt like I messed up beyond anything that could be repaired, anything that could be fixed, right? And what felt like failure was actually an opportunity for growth. And it was me making space for grace. I have a whole new understanding of and relationship with <laughs> grace. <laughs> How I need it, how I receive it, but also how I give it yeah. to other people. Something that before what I felt like was failure, I didn't really understand. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really, because I didn't have to engage in that way. But it's nothing like needing grace, needing forgiveness, needing understanding that helps you to then give it and share it a whole lot uh, more freely. So don't be afraid to quote unquote mess up because it's really just another opportunity. It is. And a lot of times it's the mess up is a lot bigger in our heads than it might actually. <laughs> yeah. Be. Um, last question I'm going to take before we wrap up. Thank you guys for hanging. If you miss any part of this, we intended to stop in 40 minutes, but the, I, like I told you, Karen, the conversation <laughs> just get rolling. It it's always fun. does. Yes. And um, Sasha again says, when did you, 
Let me read it first. When you first started, when you first started acting, did you feel you had to mold yourself into Hollywood standards in beauty and how to act? When I watch movies, sometimes I look at myself like, do I have what they have to book the room? First of all, yes, you do. And no, you don't. You have what they don't have. And that's what books the room. Nobody can be you. Nobody can do you. So it's not about becoming what they think they want because half of the time they don't even know what they want. It's about becoming you, your truest you, your best you, your whatever you. It's about showing you, your authentic self, bringing that into the room because that's the one thing that nobody else can do. Nobody else can do that. So focus there. Did I fall into that trap? Absolutely. I came out here. Girl, I lost weight. Oh, she closed her eyes, so you know what she's <laughs> I came out here to I lost weight. Um, I had a a, a pixie cut before, I which I was that. rocking, right? Girl, I miss that pixie. But the lady who does my hair is in Atlanta, and I couldn't really find anybody out here to rock it like that. And so then I got this sew-in, and so I was like, yes, honey, I'm going to just, you know, do this whole long hair, and I'm going to get skinny. And I, child, I ain't work a day. <laughs> I tried to do all that. I was like, this ain't working. I'm hungry and unemployed. And unemployed. Don't do it, boo. Don't do it. And then, like, to talk, you know, I felt like I had to change the way I, I talked in rooms, how my posture, how I presented myself. But spirit speaks to spirit. People know when you're not being yourself and it weirds them out, right? And so the best thing you can do is be you. Now, does that mean don't wear wigs? No. I have many. I don't know what you're talking about. I wear my hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> not Christine. Christine just know how to do her hair real good. But me, myself, <laughs> girl, I wear wigs um, and I'll wear an afro and I'll wear an updo. Like I'll wear it all, not because I'm trying to fit, but because like today I'm not doing my hair, sis. I love Christine, but she, <laughs> I ain't doing my hair. Y'all didn't, so, didn't get Nan eyebrow. Right. Okay. Oh. It's like you want hair or makeup. <laughs> Make a struggle. But we ain't doing both of them. So y'all got makeup today. You ain't getting hair. Okay. <laughs> Okay. But um but no, seriously, like I, I do it from a place not of, of trying to fit in or bondage, but I do it from a place of, you know, this is what I'm choo this is what I'm choosing in this moment for me, whether it's convenience or I just want to look like this or you know, whatever. So yeah, be you, do you, and like when you show up as you, that's how you book the room, the job, the the person, the anything. But that's the best thing you can do. Yeah. I, I, you said you was talking different. I'm like, how was you talking? I have a joke. Like, you know, sometimes people get famous and all of a sudden the, a British accent. Like, hey, wait a <laughs> Listen, do now, I, I did have a cousin who who clowned me. I did an episode of um of Law and Order Criminal Intent. That's like, you know, I, saw TV. I saw that one. You had an all black like suit or something. Or dress. Yeah, girl, so, yes. That's I love Law and Order, you know. Because I mean, that was when you were in New York, and I was like, it's like a bucket list show. Like, yeah, it is. It's in order. So, it is. And and I don't know, I said something, and one of my cousins was like, oh, when you get a British accent, and I was like, don't, don't do me. <laughs> don't, don't do me. But yeah, you do, you know, and it's not to say that, I mean, it's easy, you know, like my, my conversation today probably sounds different than something you might hear on YouTube because it's Christine. This is my girl. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be a different, I, I'm much more relaxed, obviously. Um, and in those moments where, you know, if you do pick a, a YouTube clip and I sound different, it could be fatigue and I want to make sure you can hear what I'm saying. Enunciation. You know? Yeah. I'm trying to enunciate because in real life, like, I, I just got off a plane and, you know, I'm tired and when I'm tired, like I don't, I'm not as crisp in my, you know, so it could be a lot of things, but one thing it is not is I'm ashamed of who I am or where I'm from or, how, you know, it's not that. And I'm grateful for that. So. 
Oh, this has been amazing. The comments, Sylvia says, I love y'all because it's raw. Sean <laughs> Chase says, I love wigs. Tracy says, love this. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Jenna Ray. She says, love the message. So lots of love here that you can't see. When this video is done, um, you. if you happen to come into the group, you can see them. Um, Thank you for the love. This has been what. How can people connect with you? When this video is done, you guys, I will edit and put uh, Karen's links. But for the sake of people watching right now, how can they connect mm -hmm. with you? Dollar sign, cash app, Kate, no sweat. <laughs> Because production ain't started back up yet, sis. <laughs> That's how you can connect. Um, no, Karen. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. So, Karen Kendrick Official, K A R A N Kendrick Official on Instagram. Um, Karen Kendrick on Twitter, but I'm never on Twitter. And then, uh, Facebook, uh, no, just hit me on Instagram. That's where I hang out most of the time. Just come over yeah, there. That's where I hang out. The laughs. The laughs. Because Christine is my girl. Listen, find you somebody to walk this thing out with. Let me say that, too. You yeah. need, you need, you can't do this by yourself. So don't. Don't even try. And it's going to be really helpful to have somebody you can just call up and just say all the words that you can't say to other people. And I'm grateful. Thank you, for Christine, for being one of those people in my life. It's not a lot, but thank you for being someone so consistently, like over the years, even when I don't have the words to say, even when there is no laughter, you know, sometimes stuff get real, real <laughs> in these acting streets, you know, but thank you for always having integrity and honoring the, the relationship that we have and the space that we've created as artists, you know, all the way back to Georgia and now and, you know, and beyond. So thank you. I love you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. My heart. Thank you. Thank you. And before we wrap, I've said before we wrap like five times, but y'all be. <laughs> <laughs> so can I be all right? I have to share this one quick story before we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> so remember, there was a movie with Lupita Nyong'o called Queen of Conway. <laughs> and me and Cameron went to go see it and if you have not seen it you should totally see it um, super e emotional and inspiring and this is just a testament to when you just know your friends and letting your friends be who they are <laughs> and so after the movie I'm like, ah, ah, ah. and Karen's like what did you think and I'm like when I just you know and I'm like word diarrhea just all the emotions and what about you? You, she was like, <laughs> I'm not. I, I can't. I can't. Not yet. To this day, to this day, we have never talked about what you thought about it. Of course, I know what your heart and spirit felt, yes. but the words never came. They could. You know, it was so good and there were so many things and Christine is great and this is why she's a great teacher and artist but this is what this is the gift that you get of Christine she's great at articulating all of those things so she can say like you know it was this and this is that. that's not my ministry <laughs> it has to like oh. marinate for a little while in me I can't just come out with it I gotta oh, yeah well, next, I love the film, next, Christine. Next it was beautiful. Talk, next Tea Talk, we it's been a few years now. I don't know when the movie came out, but I think maybe we might be ready. A um, review? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you for joining us. We have gone almost 70 minutes. This is Karen oh. Kendrick from Just Mercy, Hunger Games, Hidden Figures, Hate oh. Grey's Anatomy, Greenleaf. Google her, IMDb her, and I don't mean that in like a shady way. No, seriously, she's done some amazing work um, that will really inspire you. And again, Just Mercy is available now on streaming platforms for free. Just go to the Instagram page, go to Amazon, wherever you stream, you'll find it and support her. And all this will make so much more sense that all the stuff she got to share today. Thank you. I love you, friend. Thank you. I'm going to end this. You wait here for me. Everyone else, have an amazing night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.